Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, this should be part four. I want to talk about priming and charging. Or primers and powder, I guess. Is. Now, I don't load any pistols myself at the moment. Um, so I don't have too much for pistol primers. Uh, I use rifle primers for everything. But there are two basic size primers that you'll come across. There's pistol and rifle, or uh, sorry, small and large. Uh, this one that has a primer. So if you notice the size difference between this one, uh, get it better. There we go. So on the top you have the, it's a large rifle primer, and that's a 3220 case. Where on the bottom you have a large rifle primer in a 3030 case. They're not interchangeable, they will not fit, there's no way to make them fit. But uh, for your smaller primers, you have your small pistol and your small rifle. Uh, your low data will stipulate which one for which. For your larger ones, you have small or a large pistol, large rifle, and you will also get magnum primers and uh, like I said same as with pistols your low data will tell you which ones to use 99.9% .9 of everything is going to be um, pistol for pistol and rifle for rifles the only time you get into anything different is when you get into calibers like this 3220 which is both a rifle and a pistol uh, that kind of stuff, but just follow your load data, you'll be fine on that. Most all pistols, smaller pistols, will take a small primer. Um, I've never seen anything smaller than 45 in a pistol that takes or that has a large pocket. That's not to say it doesn't exist, I just haven't seen it. Uh, 45 ACP, I know will have both, you can get them with both uh, large and small. In most cases I think it will be large. I don't have any here but I'm just looking at uh, 45 Colt, 45 or 4440. They're both large. Uh, but again, I'm sure somewhere around there's smalls. That same one. Uh, the one case I know of that's quite notorious for having both is the uh, SKS AK-47 round, the 7.62 by 39. I know that's pretty much 50-50. Um, I don't deal with that too much. I don't have a rifle for it currently. When I did, I didn't reload for it. So uh, I can't speak too much about that, but I know that it seemed like every other box that I got my hands on was different. So, uh, For seating primers, right now I'm using the Lee Safety Prime system. It's quite simple. It comes with these little bars. I think I mentioned this already, but we'll go over it again. Primer goes in there, and as the ram comes down, Seats the primer. Pretty simple stuff. You can do it by hand as well. It's one of these, I think I mentioned that as well. <clears throat> uh, I want to move on to powder. So, I use three different methods of measuring powder. I'll use the Lee Scoops. Like this in conjunction with one of these. This is just your Lee Universal powder funnel. I'll also use this here, which is a huge pain in the ass. Um, I don't know if the new ones work better or not, but these older ones that don't have a wiper in them, they're really picky on what they like for powder. So there's also the Lee Perfect Powder Measure. That's one measure I found that 
I don't have it here. It's still in storage somewhere. So I got to get that. Um, I started on a bracket for my other press. I'll have to make one for this one as well. There's two bolts back here. I bolted that bracket in there and it came up and it held my powder measure. Sorry, adjust the camera a bit. It held the powder measure up here so it's out of the way. I can turn my dies, I can do whatever I want, make adjustments. And when I wanted to prime or charge, to run my case up and just give it a little operate it. I found that was the fastest way and the uh, the easiest way really. I, I really like that powder measure. Um, it's just one of those things I've really never had a chance to set back up. I've just been burning up what reloads that I have, but I'm to the point now where I've got just about everything depleted. So when I do get that powder measure, or get the powder measure bracket built for this press, because I didn't have, I never had it on this one. I had it on a single stage. I'll uh, I'll showcase that. I may even add it on to the end of this video. But it basically just little plate here with a rod up the back and a little thumb set screw so it can go on and off easily. Um, I've never seen anybody else with that set up on a turret press. I've seen them on regular presses, single stage, but I'll share that with you guys as soon as I get a chance. So right now we're using this setup and I'm just going to grab a, a scoop here. So I was loading some of these last night. These are 3220. One thing when you're doing this, I'll every once in a while I'll forget to index or I'll forget to put this damn thing up and I spill powder all over the place. Luckily with the little cases it's not a huge, a huge deal. It's easy to clean up. So make sure you're ran up into the die. And inside this die I'll just show you guys. So up there you're going to find one of these. This is the insert that goes inside. And what this does is it goes inside and this smaller bit is tapered. It goes in and it just puts a slight swell in that. And this goes up and it'll bottom out on this. And when you dump your powder in this type of a setup. This is what it's going to look like inside the die body. So your powder never actually touches your die body. It goes through your through your funnel and this is tapered and just all goes right into your case. And when you pull this down it gives a little pop and anything that's left inside there will fall down. I hardly ever find any powder stuck in here. If I do, it's only a couple little little pieces. Shouldn't have stuck those together. <laughs> Crap. Okay, I gotta get this apart, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the thing back together. Um, it's not that a big deal pulled apart if you guys ever want to play with it. It's just I wanted to try and do it without damaging the brass. 3220 brass is extremely thin. And any other time that I've had to put pliers on it, um, even like a little pair of needle nose pliers, there's been times where I've just held on to it to do something, and the little scratches left behind was enough to make a crack on the next firing along that line. So I try not to try to be very careful with my 3220 brass. So it's in there, it's up. So remember, it's never touching your die body, it's just basically your three parts to your funnel. Make an adjustment here. Okay. There we 
there we go. So with this, it's a little tricky to do. It's not, it's not tricky to do. It's tricky because I have the camera here. So what you want to do is get yourself a piece of paper, a piece of cardboard, credit card, bank card, health card, whatever you want to use. doesn't matter as long as it's straight edge. And you want to dip this down in there. I'm trying to see it. Right there. So you want to avoid this type of action because you're actually packing it in the scoop. You want to go down so it's falling in and then pick it back out. so you can see it. So this type of an action. And then take your whatever you're using, scrape across the top so you get a nice flush load. Drop it in there. I always give a little tap and that will make sure nothing sticks to the funnel just in case you get a little bit of static. So she's down in there now. Uh, if I grab my bullets here, just using cast bullets today. I got two different types in here. These are all sized to 308, and I got some with Lee Halox and some with Pace Wax. Set it on there. Remember the case is expanded just slightly from the powder die. That'll let you take your bullet and it'll set down in there just a little bit. Basically what it'll do, it'll set down just to the first grease groove. And just run it up into your seat with the crimp die and there you have a completed round. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope this little series has been informative. And if you enjoy it, please subscribe. I'll be doing a little more here and there, and I'll probably do a little follow-up video. I'll watch the whole series by myself, and uh, any little things that I've missed out, I'll put on the end. All right, thanks for watching.